Hello everyone, Mr. Happy here and welcome to Mondays with Mr. Happy, aka Mr. Happy Mondays, the weekly Q&A show where you ask me questions and I answer them. I gotta go back and listen to what my intro was before I started saying that because I've been trying to come up with a new intro and just nothing happens and I just, I say the same thing over and over again. Real quick, vi- no, every t- every week, videos here-ish somewhere. Uh, got a- quite a few of them, got a few that, uh, that I hope you'll enjoy, uh, including like a Puppet Master, uh, idea video and the return of Healer Happy, and I have another video I need to upload of Healer Happy as well. Um, and then on top of that, I have some other things that I uploaded throughout the week. Hopefully, you'll enjoy those. Um, no, I know about that, Gosh, Don't worry. I do that on purpose uh, because of the way that the portal happens down here. And I am recording this live like I was last week. A few things have changed. One, there's not going to be any pop-up notifications. You're not going to hear the tip notifications or sub notifications or follow notifications. That's not going to happen. Uh, we're going to see if that works as that was the feedback I generally received is that it was okay to do it live, but that it needed to be... Um, a little bit different in that sense. Uh, other than that, it's been a crazy week. Uh, I put out the video regarding uh, trying to get to 1,000 subs, the journey video, which hopefully you guys enjoyed as well. For the current, for anyone wondering, my dashboard says we're at 924. My live says 926. I think that's because it counts me and like something else as a sub. So the actual count is 924. Uh, we have what, like 14 days now? We have two weeks to the day or something like that. Two weeks to the day tomorrow, I think. And then we are set. And then at that point, it's, uh, it's you know, we try to hit 1,000. We got two weeks left to try and hit 1,000 subs. So if you're watching over here on YouTube and you want to show some extra support, I recommend doing that. Uh, $5 a month. And I know it's crazy. It's, I know it's stupid to be asking about that, like going like, hey, you know, if you guys got $5 to spare, do that. But it's like, it's just a goal. I want to reach it. If we don't reach it, it's not the end of the world. It doesn't stop me from doing anything. So I'm just putting it out there that it's important to me and what it consists of. But uh, on that note, since I'm doing this live, I think that I should get right into this week's question, shall we? All right, first question. Hey, Mr. Haps, how you doing today, man? Have a Hildebrand themed song for your house. They, they don't have that, do they? I don't really pay much attention to housing or the uh, orchestrian, so I'm not actually sure. I think, the only, I think I only have two orchestrian tracks, Sephiroth and The Feast. Haven't been on much since the igloo melted, so I can go outside now. I was always wondering what I should hang on to as far as items go. I held on to those 70 Alexandrites in case Square was going to add something and help me gain a teapot that much quicker. I still have 20 left over and other than rare random items. I wish I could just trade those in for something. I mostly like to customize things in-game and clearing out my inventory for memento items would be a godsend. Come to think of it, I actually customize things more than I actually play dungeons. What do you think Square of implementing a gold saucer attendant to trade old items in? I think the market board prohibition is fine in place of Beast Tribe's materia. I mean, those items always serve their purpose. And holding on to them in the thought that they might serve a purpose later is what we call hoarding. <laughs> and yes, it's actually come back to, to help in some cases. The Alexandrite was ended, ended up being good for the kettle. But he specifically told people there's not going to be another use for Alexandrite, at least not in the next Anima Weapon quest line. So once, you've, once it's served its purpose, you can hang on to a few extras if you want. But if you're really looking for cleaning things out, look to clean out items you don't need. Like legit, like armor pieces like oh all my tanks are at 60 why do i still have this level 36 tank piece oh in case they release another tank job and i want to level it right like you gotta weigh those kind of things like you can't just hold on to everything on the off chance that they release another job which they do 90 percent of the time so uh and then also getting rid of things like mementos i mean do you have i-230 gear that you're going to use at that level do you really need to be holding on to the mementos to buy i-210 gear like you have to think about that as well like do you really need the mementos for anything and once you've kind of like i have a bunch of hive totems i don't need i have a bunch of bismarck totems i don't need and i could just throw those out so uh i like to use those as my considerable options um what i can get rid of it's like something am i really holding on to it because i need it or just because i'm too lazy to throw it out all right next question a hap kind of kind of you like that roulette thingy thing okay obviously i played too much xenoblade but whatever uh and for whatever reason i have liam lynch's united states of whatever in my head whatever all right so i get to pick one of the random picks. i'm just gonna go straight for the first one i haven't done that in a while Rouletteception. of course i managed to pick one that has more rules uh mind the think marked question below my dragoon changes versus my nin changes oh so these are just gonna be uh, a list of changes. So this is again. So when people imp- when people send these kind of things in, since they aren't really questions, um, I tend to skim over these quite a bit. So okay, it's a pretty short one though. So uh, you chose my ninja changes. You make the Aeolian Edge an Omni positional again, uh, or switch it to Dancing Edge positional instead of Aeolian Edge. 
I don't, that doesn't really bother me. I mean, making Aeolian Edge omnipositional and making Dancing Edge positional, it's like, basically at this current point, you have a go-to for when you're in front of the boss, when you're on the sides of the boss, and when you're at the rear of the boss. I don't really see a need to change it the way it is. I mean, you're basically just shifting priorities, and it's ultimately just trying to eliminate the need for positionals when you have a warrior which is pretty often and i don't want to reduce the skill cap of ninjas of needing to go know how long they can delay at the rear to get an aeolian edge so i'm not really a fan of going back to the omni positional on aeolian and um what's it called change armor crush that gives you the third no see i wouldn't do that like that again takes away an entire kind of point um like I get, I get what you're saying, like, just make it give 30 seconds of Hutan, but then it's like, there really isn't a point in ever having Hutan, because you can just chain two armor crushes together, and it's lower output technically, but most people will just take the output increase of do, going from zero ninjutsu to however much they end up doing with the Raitan versus the buffs and all that, so no, I'm not really a fan of either of these ideas, it's, it's trying to make the job easier when it doesn't need to be any easier, and it doesn't need to be any different, these aren't the points I would hit if I was going to hit a point on ninja. All right, next question. Hey, hey, Mr. Happy. Hey. With the news of Ozma coming to 14, I, for one, am glad to kill him again for all the grief he caused me in 9. However, at the same time, this is another returning boss uh, from a previous installment. Didn't Yoshi say something along the lines he wanted to bring in more original bosses? He said he wanted to bring in more original, a more original raid. Not necessarily more original bosses. They never want to give up on all the resources they have from 12 single player installments and a multiplayer installment in the form of 11 that they have from before as well as all the other side titles they have they're never gonna not dig into those like that's final fantasy like that is the final fantasy fandom right there they said they wanted to have original raids and the weeping city of uh of maha or weeping city of Mach or Mach is uh, is an original raid, you know? So just having a boss that's a callback to Final Fantasy IX is not really any different than what they were trying to accomplish there in the first place. The game's established itself, as you say, and bringing back the occasional boss that we're unfamiliar with, or that we are familiar with, is perfectly acceptable. I just don't want them literally taking, like, oh, we're going to do another Crystal Tower, we're going to do the North Crater from Final Fantasy VII. Like, I don't want to see anything like that, you know? I've... Crystal Tower was fun, but let's 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 keep things moving in a direction that makes sense in Eorzea, and let's not, you know, bottleneck or uh, just shove ideas into the game that don't necessarily need to be there. All right, next question. Yo, Haps, we have made Zalera great. Hashtag Zalera great. You're damn right we have. So two questions for you this week. Firstly, what was your overall impression of the Neo demo? It really reminded me of the Onimusha series, but with a lot more depth. It was like a mix of Onimusha, Dark Souls, Ninja Gaiden. Like, I could feel the Team Ninja influence of the game. Team Ninja is a very very specific means at which the characters move and they perform their animations you can always identify when something is team ninja versus any other team just the speed at which things happen is way way different um but it was good i think there were some pro there were some things i didn't like about the game uh, i didn't like the uh the level select i didn't like the means of being summoned into a level uh it felt like weapons broke so often but granted if you know what you're doing you get things to repair very frequently so it wasn't that big of an issue once i realized how to get those items uh there was there was little things and more importantly like it's based on a real story apparently as real a story as it's going to be based on and uh i don't know i was less engrossed with the world as a whole like i wasn't as interested in learning about the ins and outs of uh what's going on in neo versus souls where i'm very very curious as to how everything intertwines so that was the one thing i think i didn't i took away from it that wasn't that great and secondly are there any franchises you could see that you would like to see a soul-esque version of i I'm, listen I'm still waiting on Armored Core Souls, all right? Armored Souls. From Software Made Armored Core, from Software Made Dark Souls, and Demon Souls, and Bloodborne. Just put them together, all right? That's it. Or put me in space or something. I don't know. Space or Armored Core, or both. Armored Core Souls in Space. That's the name of your next title. Somebody make a friggin' poster for that one. All right, next question. Hello, Happy and Army. Hello, you you my question this week is you're a successful streamer one of the leading makers of guides what unique opportunities have you been a part of that you didn't if if you didn't do what you do i don't know <laughs> i worked in new york city before i do what i did as a, as a desk job you know i don't know what the hell i would have done i was in school for nutrition i was in pretty good shape uh back then not anymore <laughs> definitely not anymore i'd say pretty pretty accurately i'm not 
in the greatest of... Sh- I mean, I'm a shape. It's round, but it's a shape nonetheless. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so I don't know. I, I couldn't know. I mean, that's three years ago, and I don't know what would have happened in the last three years if not for this. So I'm just going to be thankful for what I got and not worry about what would have happened otherwise because I don't want to think about that. Next question. How's it going, Mr. Happy? There's a TLDR at the bottom if you need to save time. It's my first time asking a question, so I have some Kanye fantasy. I'm not going to click on that because I don't want this video to get flagged, so I'm not going to click on anything Kanye related. Uh, my question is about classes in 4.0. Since we basically know that we're getting Red Mage Samurai, we don't know that. We, we actually don't know that we're getting both of those. Samurai is like 99%. Red Mage is still up in the air. That thing that was teased at the two-year anniversary was in no way a, we're absolutely doing this. It was him basically spitballing ideas at the player. And while we would love to take that as a teaser that they are absolutely doing it, we unfortunately can't because Red Mage is still kind of a delicate spot on how it would be implemented and whatnot. Um, what would you like to see as a healer? I'm still waiting on Geomancer, dude. The healer that focuses on DPS in order to heal. I hit the enemy with like a 20 potency spell. I heal everyone around it for like 60 potency. That's my AoE healing. It's just bam, bam, bam. Low impact, but lots of spam, but just spamming it. That's your damage, you know? And then you have other abilities like, oh, you put a dot on the target that heals it, and then it heals on, you know, another target that you have focused. And I don't know. I want Geomancer to be a healer that does raid healing via damage like i would love to have geomancer do something along those lines um chemist i don't ever expect to see um i don't expect to see anything regarding consumables i don't expect any sort of full-on support i mean even if you do something along the lines of a full-blown support buff kind of thing and even if you make it so it doesn't actually use consumables the buffs need to last for such a short period of time that you constantly have to upkeep them that's the same reason why if bard was going to be a support it would have to be that if dancer is in any in any way a support it has to be that um, it has to be something that has you pressing buttons pretty much every global cooldown if you're going to be a support. You can't just sit back and watch. So that's why I don't ever expect a full-blown support anymore. And if we do, it's going to be a DPS, like, at, at its core. So uh, I don't see I don't see Chemist. Just with Alchemist already being in the game as a crafter, Chemist seems something that is very unlikely for me to see. All right, next question. Yo, Happy. How you doing? I'm doing all right, man. How you doing? So every week I watch Mondays with Mr. Happy, and for the last six, seven weeks I've had questions that I'd forget to ask. Hopefully I ask them now, but I might have forgotten them altogether. One, are we going to get any more Savage Guides? Yeah, I need to get back into A6, because that's what's stopping me. I had A6 almost done, and then they nerfed it. And so, I mean, when I say almost done, I mean the guide. I'm on A8 Savage. I've been on A8 Savage for like a month now. Uh, but I haven't been able to raid because I went away for a week and a half, and then it's been two and a half weeks since I've raided since then. So all that comes up. Um... But A6, it's just a matter of, I don't have the, the nerfed version. Like, and I'm not going to put the guide up for the non-nerfed version when the nerfed version is out. I could technically put out the 7 guide. The 7 guide is typed up. It's just not recorded or edited or anything like that. My footage is from several weeks ago. Um, so, yes, I still do plan on finishing those. I don't know when I'll get to the A8 guide, if ever. But uh, the 6 and 7 ones are still in the works. Uh, 2, I just noticed this, but Ethis really not in Dream Network. Ethis doesn't stream, really. He makes YouTube videos. But Ethis' garbage Australian internet is not really for streaming. He's a... He's an honored guest of the network, but he's not a regular. He doesn't regularly stream, and his YouTube content is is regular, but not like super regular. So, and we and Dream Network's a Twitch thing. So, if he were to start streaming regularly, even then, I couldn't guarantee it because I don't know what Ethis has going on. But uh, it's just not, it's not a matter of just he does he does uh, stay of the realm. Therefore, he's on Dream Network. You know, he's he's not able to stream really. So, it doesn't make sense really to have that on the page itself. Three, what time do you live stream on Sundays? I'm actually live streaming right now. I have my schedule right under my stream for anyone who goes to my Twitch channel and it says it right there on the on the underside. Um, it's always uh, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Pacific and then Saturday, Sundays, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Pacific. That might change in the near future because I want to try and actually do some streams that start like way earlier in the morning. Plus, I might have some streams that start later in the day. I'm still working out the details on that one. Uh, and then four, lastly, what is your favorite flavor of Doritos, dude? I'm basic. Just give me my plain ass cheese Doritos. I'll lick the the, the Dorito dust off my fingers, uh, and it'll just and it's just amazing. And then I just actually licked my fingers. It's kind of disgusting. Give me the regular ass Doritos. All right, next question. Hey, Happy, just a quick question. Do you think it would be viable to do a market board for sale on the market board? Oh, so you could buy it for houses and personal chambers. I was so confused 
unbelievably confused right there. Um, I know it would spend more time in the free company house. I mean, there's already them in the housing areas. Do we need them in the house itself? Uh, I mean, I guess I'm not opposed to it. I would definitely get me in the house more, and that's a, they want to get people in houses more, but that's a, I don't know. I mean, even, I, I want Idleshire to have a friggin' market board before I get the I guess not. To, yeah, I guess, yeah, whatever. Put him in the house. Put him outside the house. I don't know. Put him in the house. Outside the house, no one cares. There's literally market boards all over the housing district. So it needs to be inside the house for me to care, uh, for me to care at all. All right, next question. Hey, happy first time asker here, so have a nice day. Aw, thank you. You have a nice day as well. Anyway, I wanted to ask you something I had on my mind. Do you think it would be a good idea to have something like a supreme difficulty fight for old primals? I would just rather have it, you know, savage as a difficulty for the old primals. And even then, it's like, I wouldn't want the same fight again. Again, remember, so I put that Puppet Master video out. I actually also have an entire document dedicated to a raid group, uh, not a raid group, uh, a raid fight where it is the old primals, but with entirely new mechanics. Like, nothing is recycled from their old fight, because I don't want to fight those things again if they're literally just going to have the same fucking mechanics again and again. Or it's just the same mechanics, but like one or two things is different, or the pattern is different, or it hits in more directions. Like, that's, I, I would just rather leave the old primals, work on the new primals, pretty much. That's that's what I would rather have. All right, next question. Hey, Mr. Happy, got a few questions come regarding lore, others about other stuff, so have a Buckeye to keep in your back pocket for good luck and as greetings from the Buckeye State. You know, my uncle's a hunter. Uh, he kills bears and bucks, so he probably has a few of those I could borrow. One, is Thancred going to follow the Warrior of Darkness to find out where their home base is, or is he going to try to get information and trying to get Minfilia back? I think he's going to make a really dumb decision and end up trying to help them to get Minfilia back or something. That's my guess. That was my guess a while ago on State of the Realm, so I'm going to stick to that. Uh, two, uh, continuing from question one, since he can no longer wield magics, wouldn't he make a great spy to infiltrate the Garlean home city? Um... So, oh, since Garlands can't... Uh, that's, yeah, I mean, a simple fake... Th the thing is, it's not like it's a simple fake third eye. You, they, he, It's implanted into his head. You would need to get surgery to implant it into his head. And even then, they probably are not that dumb. I'm going to assume that they're, they're dumb, but they're not that dumb. So, they're... I'm going to... Yeah, they're not... That's. I don't think that's going to work. Three, Overwatch or Battleborn? So, it's Dotto said the best thing. Whichever your friends are playing. That's the best answer to that question. Uh, I would like the chance to play with you on one of these, but I haven't tried either. Well, I own Battleborn, but I don't know when I'll get back to it. We just got done playing Overwatch, like, as I'm recording this right now. Like, we just got done doing a sub-Sunday for Overwatch. Um, and, well, Overwatch beta key doesn't really matter. Um, because it launches, like, pretty much the day after. It got extended by one day. So, May 10th is when it ends. But it's, you know, I mean, even then, after that, it's still, whoever doesn't buy it, doesn't play it. That's my only thing that's with Overwatch. I got Battleborn for free. Overwatch, it's like, am I, like, do I really want to put a game that's $40 on, like, my sub-Sunday list? Like, I feel kind of shitty doing that, but it seems like a lot of people are buying it, so it's a toss-up. I haven't quite figured out if I'm doing that yet or not. Um, number four, keep up the excellent work. And puns. God damn it. Five, if you could have any real life replica of any weapon, which would it be? Uh, probably just a gunblade. I had a gunblade when I was younger. I just like it. I like the gunblade. Gunblade's cool. Alright, next question. A Haps, two quick questions for you. Uh, one, my current favorite class to play is Astro. Hey, I like Astro. And I know that since 3.2, you pretty much have just said to meld accuracy, but with 60 dungeons now having a lower accuracy, and since I do normal mode rating, uh, is it still mandatory to only meld? Well, you don't only meld accuracy. Accuracy is your first priority, especially if you're, you are doing, like, up-to-date primal content. Uh, it's not that important. I never got around to melding on Astro because I just never picked up raid gear and shit. Um, but if you're ever going to do Savage, that's where the accuracy really matters. And the dungeons is not as important as it was before because they lower those accuracy requirements, like you said. Um, so, yeah, not, as, not a big deal if you're not doing Savage. Uh, you can meld other things. And two, this is the this one's quality of life. I draw comics for a living. Would you recommend a chair like the one you have as far as good lumbar support and general quality? DX racers are super high quality, dude. I sit in this thing like nine hours a day. Whether it be editing or watching watching a stream or uh, live stream, I sit in this thing for fucking hours and hours and hours, and it's phenomenal. So I could definitely recommend this bad boy if you can uh, find the right one for you.
Next question. Hey, Mr. Happy. How you doing? I'm doing I, man. How you doing? Got a question about a spot in the churning mist. I was flying around hunting when I came across a spot in the Greens, Greens Ward called Mother of the Sheave, where there's a statue of a praying hooded woman with wings. I'm pretty sure it has been there before, but I haven't explored the churning mist. Anyway, I flew around a bit looking for a sightseeing log. I couldn't find one, so I was wondering if there's a story to the spot. Oh, there's probably there's a story to every spot. The thing is, I don't know what the story is. I mean... What's his name? Ephes, like we were talking about earlier. Yeah, what's his name? Probably knows something about that, or he's looking for information on that, but I, I, I don't know. I don't know the story about all the little, like, statues and shit that are in the zones. Like, that's way more up his alley. Bonus question, Team Cap or Team Tony? I mean, I already know how Civil War is supposed to end in the comics, and I've now seen it. I was Team Cap anyway, because, like, it's a Captain America movie. You know, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be Team Cap. I was actually, fuck that, Team Spider-Man. I'm down. All right, next question. Hi, Happy. Hope you're having an amazing day. I know I am. I'm having a good day so far. Oh, we're at 925 subs now. We're at 926 at the start of the recording. We're at 925 right now. So I'll, if we can get the 75 subs in the next two weeks, then I'll have an amazing day. I watched your video, The Journey So Far. Hey, that's exactly what I was about to talk about. And it has given me hope. I'm at my second year of college in game design, but I want to be a broadcaster. Not really a question, but a thank you. Thank you so much for uploading that video and sharing what it's been like for you. It has really given me hope and lifted my spirits. Keep going, man. Praise the sun. Here, I'll praise the sun for you. Yeah, man, that video, the whole point of that video was not to, like, first of all, don't drop out of college. <laughs> I dropped out, like, because it was just a personal decision. I didn't drop out with the aspirations of doing, being a broadcaster. Just remember that. It happened along the way, but I just, I left college because it didn't feel like my education that I was paying for was worth paying for. Because I was basically teaching myself. That was the reason why I left. So, I'm going to say this now, don't drop out of college to try and be a broadcaster. I'd say keep going to college because the people you meet there and, the, and what you learn there is still important. I still remember a lot of people I met there. I still remember a lot of the stories that I have from there, a lot of the experiences I have from there. And that was valuable. So, don't drop out of college to be a broadcaster. If you're thinking about it, keep going. Just keep in mind that you make sure you're staying true to what you actually want to do. And if you can find time in the meantime to broadcast at college, I'd recommend at least trying to do it. Next question, hey, Senor Feliz, have you tried dos de leche? If not, you, if, if you haven't, then you should have some as a bonus. Somebody, something that's milk. I've heard of that before. I don't know. Somebody in the Twitch chat will probably tell me. Quick short question. If we get another crafting theme, Beast Tribe, do you think it would be why, be able to do 50 to 60 only? Uh, I think it would be. I think that they would make it more accessible than that, maybe 30 to 60, but not 1 to 60. I would go, I would, I would more likely believe 30 to 60 than 1 to 60. So I'm going to go with that as my answer. 30 to 60. All right, next question. Not even a hello. Okay, fine. No hello? Okay. Do you think 14 gets too dull between patches? The past few weeks seems like there's nothing to do. Same old two Dungeons of Capilore. That's why I don't do the Dungeons of Capilore. If I do the Dungeons of Capilore, I'm playing a job I don't usually play. Because that makes it far more interesting to be learning how to do a job. If you're not leveling a new job or doing the newest Savage one, it doesn't seem to be much going on. I mean, that depends on what your interests are. There are people who fill in all that spare time with crafting and gathering. There are people who fill in that spare time with working towards housing. There's people who uh, take that spare time to socialize with people that they play with on their servers there's people who log in and they start making characters on other servers there's people who pvp there's people who um do like there's there's a bunch of different things it's a matter of what your interests like if you just like fighting shit yeah it could feel that way and that's why i don't ever force myself to log in if i don't want to you know what i mean i just make sure that i pace myself between patches because let's be realistic here i like to consume content way faster than i'll ever be happy with games releasing it except for blade and soul which released it faster than i was willing to consume it but that's just a matter of interest so uh, i guess it depends it depends on what your interests are and if the and if they're narrow, if they're wide, and if there's other games that you're interested in trying in between patches, because you should not be ignoring other games between patches. I definitely don't recommend doing that. And next question, howdy do, Hapsy. I have a question for you, but since it's my first time posting, my bonus is a game. Ooh, Lenny Face. I love Lenny Face. Find the question, but be aware if you choose the wrong option, sick picks and nasty puns. Okay, so I'm not going to lie. I'm hiding this, because if it is sick picks, I don't know what that means, so I'm like... I'm not gonna get in trouble just for a fucking game. Like, bottom line. Um, okay, that one was a pun. I'm just making sure that there are no actual, like, a wild sick picks. Okay, never mind. These aren't actually sick picks. Okay, I, I couldn't do the roulette, um, because it was like, I, you, I don't know what sick picks mean. That could mean so many things that are not good for the video. So I literally just, I literally have now at this point clicked all of them, and I'm going to go straight to the right answer. 
pretty much on this one. Uh, so let's see. They were re they were they were just they were pictures. One was of Titan doing a landslide. There's nothing crazy about that. But let's see. This was the right one. Um, never mind. Unexpected Earth and Fury at this. Well, I guess that works out okay. You deserve a question. Unexpected Fury at this. Well, see that's fine. That's pretty funny. I like that. I like Ethis's face on Titan. And I like that the heart is covering part of his face. So, I'm perfectly okay with this one. This hidden sick pick right here. And then we have this. So, what are the best class quests? I really like Warrior, Scholar, and White Mage. Well, those are job quests. So, I don't know if you mean job quests or class quests. Because there is a difference between the two. I think class quests as a whole are better than job quests, in all honesty. The only job quests that I really liked were, like, Dragoon and, I guess, Dark Knight. And even then, it was the pre-50 Dark Knight quests I liked better than the post-50 ones, which is just whatever, you know what I'm saying? So I think that, in general, class quests are better than job quests, which is fucked up, but that's just, I don't even know which one's best, because I barely pay attention to them, so just one of those. All right, next question. Hey, happy first time posting, so have a cookie. Good, I'm hungry. I want your personal opinion on a situation I am currently in. I just came back from a break and I'm planning on maining ninja. I play in Australia. I'm going to stop you right there, because those two words, ninja and Australia, were way too close together. Not in the same sentence, but close enough. I sometimes get mudra lag. So that's not even mudra lag. That's that's input lag. Input lag in Final Fantasy XIV is when you have a poor connection to the server and you press something and it resets your action. It, it, it starts to perform the action, but then it pulls back a little bit and it's like, oh, I thought I used that and then it just skips the action entirely. So um, that's not even, that, you're going to have that issue with any job if you don't play on the Japanese servers from Australia or with like battle ping or what the fast or something. And since you're on PS4, what the fast is not an option. I was considering transferring to Japanese servers to help deal with that lag, but I'd like your opinion. Yeah, that's my opinion, is it, you either need to play something that's less influenced by lag, like maybe Black Mage, or a tank maybe, and even then a tank is dangerous. Like if you go to hollowed ground and it does that reset shit, no bueno. Um, but yeah, uh, Japanese servers is like the easiest thing to recommend. Go to Tonberry pretty much is my number one recommendation if you're on PS4 in Australia because that's, that's not a good situation to be in. Right, I think we got two of these questions here on the Dream Network page left so far. Yeah, we do. Okay. Hello, Mr. Happy. Long time stream lurker and long time YouTube subscriber. I know because you tipped me $5 earlier on today's live stream. Hey. As a bonus, here's, a 50, here's $15 for an in-game lamp I could get cheaper in real life. Kappa, Kappa, Kappa. I recently started looking for a static, and I've been setting myself up in party finders and even posts on the forums recently. I'm looking for one given my schedule and my character. It's kind of hard considering I'm on a low pop server in Lobby and most people are already in statics. Anything else I can do? You have to be willing to server transfer. Like, that's a big thing. If you are looking to raid, server transfers have to be a serious consideration for you. Not necessarily straight to Gilgamesh, but if you find a group, you need to be telling groups you're willing to server transfer. Granted, it's a pain in the ass if they have you server transfer and then they don't accept you. That's the number one problem, which is why. If you have any prior footage of raiding, it helps. But if you don't, eh, it's rough. It's rough. You may just need to try and get into one of those Lamia groups and just see if you can trial for one of them and just contact them directly and just be like, hey, you know, I'm looking to join raiding. I don't really have much experience. I was wondering if one night I don't need to join your static, but if I could get in and get a raid night in and try and, you know, learn more about myself in a raid scenario, I mean, you might have a better choice doing that. Because you ever think they would attach a rare ingredient to drops to savage that will allow raiders who don't craft to make money in some way? I've always wanted that, but let's be honest, the most of the hardcore raiders that don't craft, they're selling savage. Like, let's, let's just be blunt about that. Like, that is how they make money. They just beat the raid and they sell it to other people. So, I don't know that they'll add that, because then that adds even more value to it. So, then it would just increase the price of sales, and then most groups would say either include the ingredient, don't include the ingredient. It's, it's, it's hard to tell what they would actually do with that one. But I've always wanted crafting ingredients for raid quality gear, like a body piece that can only be made with something that drops from like A7 Savage, for example. And then crafters are a little bit more valued, and then the raiders bring that item, and it can go to the market, and it makes it possible to buy some higher-end gear to make those with a lot of money feel a little bit better. So I've always wanted recipes and items to be dropping from Savage that aren't just gear. So, I say yes. I hope they do it, and hopefully you can find a static, and hopefully you can get some experience with some of the groups that are on your server. All right, and this is the last question that's coming from over on the forums. How you doing, Haps? Got a nice and short question for this week. It's also the last question. Don't, do you think we'll ever get more free retainers? 
I doubt it. I think they would like to, but I think giving us just more free inventory is more important than free retainers. I think retainers will stay priced, but we'll get the increase in the armory chest and our regular inventory slots like they've spoken about before. I think that's far more likely than just getting another free retainer. Uh, also, random bonus question related to what I've been doing this week. Uh, let's see. With Hildy's questline focusing on Gigi, do you think Serenius will bring in Gigi from the Goldsmith quest and have them interact uh, with each other and possibly an asset? Well, I mean, they just have Hildebrand. I mean, Hildebrand can just hammer away at anything he wants. He's a master Goldsmith. So, if anything, it's just... Uh, what what Ethis guessed was that Gigi is going to basically follow around uh, Godbert and just be... God I said Hildebrand by accident. Uh, Godbert... Um, Godbert uh, and like be his protege in some way so that would be a pretty decent guess considering the only picture we have of him is him just wearing his underwear with a Lollafell body but we'll see what they actually end up doing I, have a f I hope GG doesn't end up that Lollafell body forever because that shit's so awkward dude so awkward um, and that's going to be it for the questions over on the forums. That was quite a few questions, uh, but the recording still has a little bit of time. So I'm going to grab two questions from the live chat right now, and we're going to include those. I'm just going to minimize that real quick, and we'll get a few questions from the live chat. All right, so we got two questions from the live chat today, guys. Two questions. So let's see what it ends up being. All right, so the first question we're going to be taking from the chat is, what games have you not finished or dropped that you would like to pick up again? So Witcher 3 is a big one on that front because Witcher 3 was just so big giggity that I couldn't finish it. Fallout 4 is another one that was just so big I couldn't finish it giggity. Um, and I guess it wasn't so much that they were too big for me to finish giggity, it was that there wasn't enough interest in me playing those games and whenever I consider playing a game nowadays I have to consider its effect and result on both the live broadcast and on YouTube. If the result from either of those things or both of those things is not very good then I don't generally finish playing it. That's a good sign for if a game is not doing well on my channel, is if I do not finish playing it. So Witcher 3 was not doing that well, Fallout 4 was not doing that well, um, Trails in the Sky was not doing that well. Uh, so then a lot of that comes into consideration. So I miss a lot of games that I may have interest in playing, but it doesn't seem to do well on my channel, so I tend to look for the next game I'm interested in playing that will do well on my channel. So it's a tough compromise that I need to make, and I have to figure out which one, wh how I can balance both of those things. So it's still a learning process for me on that front. So if you don't see me finish a game, that's usually why, and that's why I haven't finished things like Witcher 3 and Fallout 4. All right, and the last question that I'm going to take from the live chat is going to be, ever thought about returning to Final Fantasy XI just to see the final scenario play out? If I went back to Final Fantasy XI, which I probably will in Final Fantasy XI Reboot, the thing is I wouldn't get to see the final scenario play out in Final Fantasy XI Reboot, and I could just Google it. Um, if anything, the, what would get me going back to Final Fantasy XI more likely than seeing the final scenario would be going back because there's a high demand for it on my channel and it's something I can play. I noticed that the original part, part one of the quest for Leaping Lizzie, was is one of my better videos. It's got like 130,000 views, like 500 plus comments, like 900 likes or something like that. That is one of the most successful, but the ones after that didn't do as well. Like over time, they've done well, like, you know, 10,000, 12,000 views. But after that, like the interest in them weaned over time. And that is something I have to consider when I start a series and when I stop a series. I mean, that's what stopped Healer Happy to start. That's what stopped... Final Fantasy XI, on top of my lack of interest in it when I got to, like, about part 40 or 41. So, a lot of those things come into play. I mean, that's the thing. When you run a YouTube channel, when you run a Twitch channel, and you run it as your primary source of income, every decision you make is very much influenced by the statistics you have regarding um, your channel. You know, did I get a lot of viewers playing this? Did I, did I get... I'll, you know, a lot of people sub when I was playing this. A lot of people, did new people follow me when I was playing this? Did people like this video? Did people dislike this video? How many people watched this video? How many people asked for another one, you know? How many people, um, 
how many people posted new ideas in the comment section how many people were uh happy to watch like there's a lot of little things and then who watched this video you know is it people that are regulars to my channel is it people who are new to watching my channel there's a lot of little things that go into it that sort of change your perspective from a gamer standpoint because there are things that you can be interested in and make videos on and that's great you should always be doing those things for yourself once in a while because you need to make sure that you're following your own interests as well but it's again about finding the interest between what i enjoy playing and and what my chat and what my stream and what my YouTube channel enjoys watching. So I try to find that crossover and I make it th that the majority of what I play. Final Fantasy XI is one of those things that is in a very awkward spot on my channel because I'm not terribly interested in it anymore. But there are people who, obviously, who are Final Fantasy fanatics and a lot of people who played XI and a lot of people who still have interest in seeing more videos regarding it. So it's a tough call to make, especially considering that if I play 11, it is a lot of time. I have to dedicate a lot of time into it. So it's a tough decision. I mean, if like, I mean, speak, speak with, speak with your likes, speak with your dislikes, speak with your, speak with your words, you know, use your words, slices, use your words or use your wallets, whatever it is you want to do to tell someone that you want them to continue making content. You need to convey that because if I don't get that feedback and I get either no feedback or negative feedback, then I have to assume that something is no longer desired on the channel and that I need to uh, look at other things. I mean, that's what ended up having with Bleeding Soul. There was less interest in myself, there's less interest in, from it in the channel, and that's why I stopped playing it. So keep that in mind. Just pretty much keep all of that in mind if you're watching this video that you need to speak up a lot. Like right there in the chat, don't ever play it again was the first thing that I saw. <laughs> So that's the feedback I have, and I can only go off the feedback that I have and how I feel personally. So that's going to be the last question we have from the live stream. Thank you, everyone, for asking your questions live as well as asking your questions over on the Dream Network forums. If you want to ask a question for next week's recording of Mondays with Mr. Happy, definitely be sure to go over to the Dream Network forums, ask it there, and uh, as long as we have time, make sure you try to consider other people when you're asking your question. Consider that it is a question or uh, that there's some sort of question aspect to it because it makes getting to all of the questions a lot easier. And then it makes it so they can do some live questions over for the live recording later. Uh, also, again, videos from last week. We'll put those right here again, like right here. I don't know. I just like them here, like right next to my face. So I can just like lay my head against them and then just take a nap real quick. <sighs> But on that note, everyone, I'm going to wrap up this recording of Mondays with Mr. Happy. Get this over on YouTube as quick as possible. And by as quick as possible, I mean tomorrow because it's Sunday right now and it won't be up till Monday. So whatever the hell that means. Anyway, thank you, everyone, for over on YouTube. I'm going to go and separately wrap up the live stream. So thank you for coming by, everyone, over on the YouTube channel. And I'm going to wrap up now with Twitch. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next week. Until then, take care.